Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'll be showing you how to check and secure the neutral sending unit bolts on the DR650. The neutral sending unit's bolts on the DR650s have been known to back themselves out a little bit or come out altogether, which can cause the potential for some serious engine damage if it's not addressed. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, is this something that I need to address on my DR650? Well, if you do have one of these bikes, I would highly advise that you take the precautionary steps in order to address this issue. If you don't, you might be running into some problems down the road with your engine. Now what most people begin to experience with this bike and this specific problem is the neutral unit's light, the indicator light on your dash will begin to flicker on and off. Now if you don't have a problem with the power wire or the ground wire, odds are you've got something going on with the neutral sending unit's bolts. Now today we're going to be showing you how to fix this problem on a 2014 DR650. Now this bike right here only has about 2,500 miles on it and it has not yet begun to show symptoms of this problem. But as opposed to waiting until we do have a problem, we're going to go ahead and address the issue now. To do this job, we're just going to need a few basic hand tools. You will want to have a clutch holding tool, a hammer, punch, gasket scraper, some high strength thread locker, as well as a drain pan, safety glasses, rubber gloves, contact cleaner, and some rags. Now we will be draining the oil today, so you will want to have some replacement engine oil, and it may not be a bad idea to pick up an oil filter while you're at it, along with a replacement clutch cover gasket. To begin, start by removing the skid plate if you have one. Next, we can drain the oil. Disconnect the clutch cable at the clutch cover. Next, we can clean around the area of the oil line at the top of the clutch cover before removing it. Once it's clean, we can then remove the union bolt. When doing so, be mindful of the crush washers. Next, we're going to clean around the oil cooler line with some contact cleaner. Then we can remove it and when removing it, be mindful of the O-ring. Next, we can remove the three fasteners that retain the oil filter cover to the case, then remove the oil filter. Now, this step is not necessary in order to service the neutral sending unit's fasteners. However, since we are draining the oil, we might as well replace the oil filter with it. Next, we can remove the two springs from the foot brake. Next, we can disconnect the foot brake pedal at the clevis on the foot brake reservoir. Next, remove one bolt from the right side foot peg and loosen the other. Allow the foot peg to rotate down and out of the way. Next, we can remove the clutch cover's fasteners, then the clutch cover. Be mindful of the cover's dowels. When removing the fasteners from the clutch cover, keep in mind that one of the fasteners next to the oil fitting at the top of the clutch cover is going to have a washer on it. Be sure that this bolt with this washer makes it back into this location. Next, we can remove the four fasteners on the clutch's pressure plate. When removing these fasteners, remove them evenly. Next, we can remove the pressure plate with friction and steel discs. Next, we can flatten out the clutch hub nut lock washer. Then secure the clutch with a clutch holding tool and remove the clutch nut. Next, we can remove the breather cover that has two Phillips head fasteners. If the Phillips head fasteners are difficult to remove, you may want to use an impact driver to avoid stripping them out. All right, so now that we've gained access to the neutral sending unit's bolts, we can now remove them and then apply some high strength thread locker. Now keep in mind that as you can see, there's not much torque on these fasteners to begin with. And the reason for that is they're not really holding any axial or radial load. Now it's just needs to be enough torque to hold the switch in position on the shift drum and be able to detect a neutral. Now we're gonna replace these fasteners one at a time. We'll pull one off, clean it, apply high strength thread locker, reinstall it, and then torque it to two foot pounds. Now when torquing these fasteners, you do not want to exceed two foot pounds. If you do, you run the risk of damaging the threads or just pulling them out of the engine's case altogether. 
So now that we've got that taken care of, the next step before we reassemble everything is to clean up all of our parts as well as clean and scrub off the old gasket from the mating surfaces on our crankcase as well as the clutch cover. Next we can reinstall the breather cover. Next we can reinstall the clutch. When installing the clutch basket, if it just doesn't seem like it's seating all the way like it should, you can grab the oil pump drive gear and rotate it just a little bit until the gears finally mesh and the basket's able to fully seat. Make sure that you do this before installing the rest of the clutch. Torque the clutch hub nut to 36 foot-pounds. Then secure the lock washer. Next, install the steel and friction discs. Next, we can install the pressure plate with springs. Make sure to evenly seat the pressure plate and its bolts and torque them to seven foot-pounds. Next, we can reinstall the clutch cover with the new gasket. Make sure that the dowel pins are in place. All right, now before we install the clutch cover onto the case, something I wanna point out to you real quick is on our pressure plate here, the clutch push rod that we've got, this is what actuates our clutch. This has teeth on it. Now inside of our cl clutch's cover, we've got an actuator arm that spins and it has teeth on it as well. So when we go to fit these two together, make sure that this engages the actuator arm inside of the cover when you go to fit them together. All right, so now that we've got the clutch cover on, we can begin to reinstall our fasteners. Well, if you remember when you took these out, that this one right here, just below the oil union bolt, is gonna have a washer on it. So we're gonna install this one first because we know where it goes. Now, you're probably gonna have a bunch of leftover fasteners like this and wondering where each one of them goes. Well, a useful tip whenever this happens to you, when you install the fasteners into the case's cover, without threading them, with them all just sitting in there, they all should sit at the same level or same height. All right, so now that we've got all the fasteners in their respective locations, you can tell that they're in the correct positions because they all protrude from the engine's case the same distance as all the others. When installing the clutch cover's fasteners, make sure to torque them to seven foot-pounds. Next, we can install the oil filter, then the oil filter cover with spring. Torque the oil filter cover fasteners to seven foot-pounds. Next, we can reinstall the oil cooler line. Make sure to refit the O-ring then torque the fasteners to seven foot-pounds. Next, we can reinstall the oil line at the top of the case. Make sure to properly refit the crush washers. Torque to 14.5 foot-pounds. Next, we can reinstall the clutch cable at the top of the engine case. Next, we can reinstall the brake reservoir's clevis onto the foot brake. Make sure to use a new cotter pin. Next, we can reinstall the two springs on the foot brake. Next, we can reinstall the foot peg and torque the bolts to 28 foot-pounds. Next, we can reinstall the drain plug and torque it to 17.5 foot-pounds. Next, we can add 2.5 quarts of engine oil to the engine. Lastly, we can reinstall the skid plate. And that's it. Securing the neutral unit sending bolts will help to give you some added peace of mind in knowing that they have been secured correctly and will also help you to avoid the potential for a catastrophic engine failure down the road. Now, if you've liked this video and you want to see more, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how to's and top fives. And also check out our other DR650 videos, including a bike build. Now you can find all the parts that we've used here today on our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com. So be sure to check that out. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching and keep the wrenches turning.